I'm Travis Roby. I'm 50 years old. I'm a truck driver by day and bladesmith by night. I love bladesmithing because I can go out to the garage and I get in the zone. Just focus on what I'm doing. It's nice to see something that you create come out of the steel and last forever. My name is Cameron LaFrance. I am 20 years old from Warner Robins, Georgia. I got into metalworks thanks to my father. He, early on, was saying I'd be a welder or someone who plays with fire. It's really what sparked, no pun intended, my drive for working with metal and fire. My name is Mike Powell. I'm from Hastings, Florida. I make blades as often as I can, usually a couple hours in the morning before work, and then as much time as my wife will let me on the weekend. She sacrifices a lot of our one-on-one -on -one time for me to be in my shop making blades. If I win the 10K, I'm gonna get my wife something nice that we can enjoy together. Bladesmiths, welcome to the forge. You guys see we've got a bunch of different tools in here, and I want you to each use at least two of them to source your steel for your blades. We've got hammers, we've got chainsaws, we've got bandsaws, monkey wrenches, you name it. With whatever tools you guys choose, I want you each to create a pry bar knife, which means one end needs to be wedged and work as a functioning pry bar. You need to be set up for a full tang, and we want to have a blade that measures between 11 and 13 inches. Keep your eyes on the clock. Do your absolute best work. You will only have three hours in round one of the competition, and that time starts now. Right off the bat, my game plan is to get a hold of those bandsaw blades. I know I want to make a canister, and I don't want to try to put any thick, heavy tool steel or the hammers or any of those bits into the can. I wanted that thin material that I could get in there with that powder. First thing is get white out in that can and let that white out start drying so that I know my can's gonna separate. I absolutely have no intention on leaving that on there. So I'm looking at the steel and it's some good, some bad, but I see the bandsaw blade and the handsaw. I know for a fact that that's hardenable steel. I look over at the crate and I see some pipe wrenches. So I decided to switch over to the pipe jaws and using the leftover of that handsaw. I plan to do a layered Damascus billet. I'm going to go ahead and put the bandsaw blades in the center core where my edge is going to be. Make sure I got more than enough for this blade. As I'm looking to see what's left, I decided to go with the handsaw and files and make a canister Damascus. I'm going to take it casual. And that's my plan, just slow and easy. Have to get this can off of this billet. So I take it over to the chop saw, and I'm going to cut the ends off so I can actually see the seams. Let's see here. I find the seams. Luckily, this thing actually starts peeling. There we go, Mike. Oh, Finally. I've got enough of this can off that I think I can take this thing to the grinder now and grind what's left off of there. As it's in the forge, I'm thinking, man, if I put it in the press, I can see it separate a little bit. Maybe I can get the press to help me. I think he got some of it peeled. So for my design, I want something that's going to have a nice, strong spine. I need the edge on the tip for prying and something that's not too thin for chopping. So I've cut the tip off. I'm starting to forge in the bevels. It's got an angle so that you can wedge in and pry with it. So I get out my ruler, and I'm measuring my blade up. And as I'm looking at it, I'm like, maybe an inch and a half short? I'm in trouble. I've got to stretch this thing out. So the hammer I'm using I brought is called a flatter, and it keeps things flat. Instead of running over to the post vise, give it a couple whacks. I've used it time and time and again at home, and it works fantastic. Before quench, I'm at 11 and a quarter. Not a lot of room, but it's there. I'm going to get this blade quenched. I like the sound of that. I'll take this thing to the grinder. I'm going to get as much done as I can before that clock hits zero. I got my blade to length, and I got my handle sorted out enough, and so I get ready for my quench. Nope. As I'm trying to skate the file, I feel a digging, so I go in for a second quench. <laughs> I got a lot of voices in my head that tell me not to do this, but I've got to get a hard blade. It's not skating. Third time's the charm. Oh, boy. That's bad. I'm starting to think, did I choose the right steel? Against better judgment, go for a third quench. And this time, it skates a little better than before. That's just going to have to work. 
the judges want a pry bar knife, so I'm going for a cleaver type blade with a flat end on that 90 degree corner and I'll be good. I get it up to temperature and I get it in the quench. I don't hear any cracks, I don't hear any pings, I'm good. Five, four, three, two, one. Turn off your machines, put down your tools, round one is over. Well, guys, congratulations. The three of you are moving forward into round two of our competition, where you'll fix any issues you guys have with your blades and add handles, turning them into fully functioning knives. Now, unfortunately for you guys, other than pin stock, the pantry is off limits. But the good news is, somebody left me a chainsaw. All right, gentlemen. This log here is the only material you guys have available. You guys have two hours in round two to complete your handles, and that time starts now. First thing in round two that I'm gonna do is get my handle scales established. So I take my chisel and start beating the ever-living crap in the center of the log. Finally, pop. Finally! My plan is to split the wood as much as I can without having to grind too much. You know, it's interesting. Travis is trying to use a chisel to break off the piece that he has. They look like pretty good little scales already. I've got my scales cut. I'm trying to drill these holes. I'm still having no luck at this press. Doesn't want to cut at all. Son of a bitch, man. I don't want to mess around with this thing. So I'm like, well, I'll sharpen this bit. I do it at home all the time. I get back to the press. The bit cuts right through like butter, no problem. Hallelujah. Problem solved, just like that. Yes. Now that I got both my scales, I'm going to fit up my handle. I'm praying it with each tap that it does not crack. <sighs> One thing done, time for the next. So I put the epoxy on the first scale. I'm lined up, and I pick up the other scale, and automatically I grab it, swipe with some epoxy. Oh, crap, I'm on the wrong side. Oh, this could be all bad. I take everything to the grinder, and I just clean it up. The glue's off the handle, and now I'm just going to put this thing back together and get it together right. I'm looking at that delamination right at the end of the tip, and I know that it's going to be tight. I can't grind too much. I have less than a half an inch of room. I cannot go below parameters. I have got to get this blade just right. Get rid of that. I refuse to go home on parameters. Five, four, three, two, one. Gentlemen, turn off your machines, put down your tools. Round two is officially over. Bladesmiths, welcome to our strength test. Our ladder, pry, and chop. I'm going to take your blades, drive them under these metal plates, and try to pry them off. Then after that, uh, I might just beat the hell out of the ladder for a while. How's that sound? Absolutely. Go Don't for it. act so thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, you signed up for this. <laughs> Mike, you're up first. You ready to go? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right, let's go. I'm like, you survived. Good job. Biggest problem I had, though, was this tip. It didn't come to a, like a chisel point or anything like that, so it was harder to drive it under that plate. Handle's a little lean, but it's not uncomfortable. And everything's still together and tight. Good job. Thank you. Cameron? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I saw you look dead in my eyes. It scared the crap out of me. I'm sorry. All right, Cameron, you survived. Good job. This isn't ground down to a zero edge or even close, so it was a little trouble driving it in. But once I got it under there, 
that plate popped right off, no problem. Your edge is still good. Good work. Thank you very much. Your turn, buddy. <laughs> he looks thrilled. <laughs> Not good. OK, Travis, you never know what's going to happen in these competitions. That was the last thing I expected. Your blade held up great, no problem there. But your handle scales came off. You can see that the male threads aren't even coming about halfway through. You might have had a thread holding each one. That's about it. And that's why your handle came apart. Travis, you were able to fix the issues with the blade after round one, but unfortunately, your handles fell off during the testing phase. And unfortunately, that makes the tool no longer testable. And for that reason, we're going to have to ask you to please leave the forge. Thank, Thank you, Travis. Well done, Thank man. you. Good job. Good work, Travis. Thank you. Good fight. I'm disappointed in myself. I should have known better. I'll just go home and get back to the forge and keep on doing what I love to do. I made it this far. I made a solid blade. I'm happy. I'm, I'll be all right.